really the beginning of the Siri story and the first prototype that I built of a Siri-like system was in 1993. This is before there was a web browser or I had ever seen a web browser. And we're going to learn about the internet perhaps and, and uh, ethernet from our next speaker. But before I ever saw a web browser, I imagined there would be a world with many computers internetworked with services working on them everywhere. And to, to interact with these services, you would talk to them. And they would understand you and work together to achieve tasks on your behalf. And I had a tablet PC, much like the iPad, with this user interface on it. You could talk to it. You could use handwriting recognition. And, and really, most of the functionality that came out many years later on the iPhone uh, was present in this 1993 system. So what's all of this story? Lesson one, ideas can take time to develop. So pick something. When you start to work on a little project, you might end up working on it longer than you expect. So pick something you're passionate about, you believe in, you want to uh, follow. So 18 years from first prototype to the iPhone uh, release. Uh, and if you count my new company, Viv, which you can ask about perhaps in the question and answers period, instead of that two and a half months uh, acquisition with the two and a half years commercialization, I can now say I've been working for about two and a half decades in a continuous axis along something I really believe in. Thank you. Thank you. So lesson two is, well, you know, why did you wait so long to start Siri? If you had all these, this work in these versions, couldn't you have just saved a lot of time and done it much earlier? And the truth is, if we had launched Siri as a company any time earlier, it would have failed. And so as you have your interests and your, your goals and your areas of exploration, be watching the world and look for triggers and trends that tell you when is the time to now take it from a hobby to really focusing on this and it's time to take it to the world. So for us, the trigger was the iPhone itself. When the iPhone came out in 2007, we said, this Apple has just flipped the game. Every handset manufacturer, telco, et cetera, they're in trouble. And two years from now, they're going to be scrambling to try to compete with the iPhone. But the screens are small, the bandwidth is slow, it's still hard to type. And so this Siri idea is really the perfect thing to kind of one-up the iPhone. And of course, the irony is that uh, Apple and Steve were the ones to buy, to buy uh, Siri. But we, we could know when the iPhone came out, it was so disruptive, you could predict the future two years from now, which is how long it would take to actually build it in a real version you could launch and sell. So look for the triggers. Um, uh, as you go. So number three. All right, so now you've got your goals. You're going to be working on them. You're going to pick something you care about, and that's important to you. You're going to watch for those trends and triggers. But pick goals that are hard and important, because they take the same amount of time to work on something really important with all your life and passion and heart and intelligence as it is to work on something fun and throw away, but not as important. So fun is good, but when you have that chance, think about what possible, what's the potential impact of what I'm working on? Um, would it, you know, how much will it change the world? And here are three different ways to try to measure, to ask yourself this question. Could this impact 100 million people? Now, you know, if I worked on, say, model train set, you know, that's a good thing to work on, but it's, it's the, the community who works on it is smaller. It won't impact that many people. Um, so here are a few companies who've done that. YouTube, Instagram, my son told me Snapchat or something I should put on this list, I don't know. They just recently got to 100 million users, so they now qualify. Um, so trying to find ideas that will engage and impact and change the lives of at least 100 million people, that's an important big idea. Uh, let me focus on one. So change.org is the world's largest petition platform for good. Does anyone here use change.org? Yeah, thank you. So I was a founding member and first developer of change.org. 
So Ben Rattray, the CEO, came to me and we started this. Thank, thank you. But we did not, we knew we wanted to take this idea of social networking for social activism to the world, but we didn't know how to do it. And we did not start out as a petition platform. Uh, we tried everything possible that you could do. Um, but what we did right was lesson four, follow the data. So we had a website and we did everything. You could uh, gift uh, one square meter of rainforest to someone. You know, that could make the world a better place if you got enough of that going. We had a, a jobs board, the largest job board when the economy went down for people who want to go back to work, but for good causes. We had so many different ideas, but petitions was one little feature. But it seemed, because we instrumented the data and we measured it, that seemed to be having a little more takeoff than the other features. So we moved it to the middle, we made it a little bigger, we made it a little bigger, and now the website, change.org, is just about petitions. So the lesson is we did not know where we were going to end up, but we measured the data and we helped follow what it was telling us. So think in your lives, with your goals, with your achievements, how can you measure the data and actually have it change how you do your, you know, your path, your path. So 100 million people, another way is you might set out to produce 100 million of value. I'm going to build something that I can sell and will make lots of money. That's never been one of my interests, although I guess the iPhone 4S, uh, when it uh, sold, uh, the, the pre-orders alone were more than the $250 million. In 24 hours, it sold more iPhone 4Ss than um, than uh, we had put in for all of DARPA's money on the research phase. And it became, with really no other features other than Siri, the iPhone 4S was the greatest selling technology product of its time. Apple went from a stock price of 350 before Siri and iPhone 4S to 650 past Exxon and became the largest or the most valuable market company in the world. So I guess someone made some value from the products. But that's not what we were, I was setting out to do. Thank you. And the third, and which is to me more interesting, push boundaries. Change what people think is possible, right? Make a technology advance, a scientific advance that could have real impact at a big thing. And that's hard. Um, so here are a few companies. So Siri, I think, pushed, the, pushed forward what expectations were and what people thought was possible. DeepMind is doing that for machine learning. Uh, we're trying to do that with my current company, Viv. And let me tell you a little bit about this fourth company called Sumly. Sumly was an AI company. And one of my investors called me up and said, Adam, I've got a CEO of this AI company who loves what you've done with Siri and at Apple, could you just take a call with, with him? And I said, sure. For you, I'll, you know, half an hour call, not a problem. But I'm super busy, I, I'm just packed. Um, and she goes, oh, there's one more thing. And so this, is, this statement is for those of you who go, oh, I'm, I'm young, I'm in high school. I can't do a technology advance and break through. Now, this is the last day of the conference. You've probably heard stories again and again and again of people have done it. But this message is, you can. So, so she says, yes, please uh, you know, take a, ca a call with this CEO of an AI company. One thing, he's only 15 years old. And I said, I will give, you, give him 20 minutes. I'm like, 15, are you kidding me? So I have this call, and I'm blown away with the intellect and the intelligence of the voice on the other end of this, this phone. He knew business, he knew technology, he, he knew you know, research. And I'm like, man, I can't, I can't believe it. I go, could you send me a picture? He goes, yeah, yeah, here's a picture that I just took yesterday. And this is what he sent me. So Nick Delosio, he's a, a, from London. This is him at his bedroom, working away, advancing the boundaries of what companies thought possible. And a year and a half later, he kind of styled up a little bit, a bit more boy band. Uh, at 17, this is what he looked like. And he sold Sumly to Yahoo for many tens of millions of dollars for a three-person company because 
He had created technology that was doing something the internet giants could, uh, couldn't do themselves. So this is just, don't be thinking, oh, I can't, I'm not a research scientist, you know, I haven't published papers, you can do this. And so, one last lesson, and maybe this is the most important lesson. As you go forward in life, really focus on the goals that you have. Think about them, verbalize them. And, I, and on another day, I can tell you the whole story of my life and what I call verbally stated goals. So you should think about what's important to you and why. Focus on the emotion in your chest. Am I frustrated? Do I have a desire, a need to explore something? What is that emotion? How do I phrase it into words? And then you pursue it. And you tell everyone you meet, this is what I'm doing. And by telling, it commits you to, the, to that goal, and people start to help you. They're like, I've got a friend who, you know, is interested in that. And, and all of a sudden, as you move forward to this goal, even without knowing how to achieve it, by committing to it and telling people that this is what I'm doing, you will get there. And I've, I've proven this over and over and over in my life since when I graduated college. From that point, I said, what do I do? This is a life decision moment, and this is the process I've taken since. But a key part when you're visualizing your goals and to verbalizing your goals is to picture it. What would success mean? And for Siri, this is my experience. So one day I walked, I said, we're starting this company to do an iPhone app. And we're going to call it Siri. No one, knew, no one could remember the name, and it was terrible. And I walked into an Apple store, and this is what I saw. There were these icons of the big guys on the wall of Apple. Facebook, Google, Pandora, Skype. And I was trying to dream as big as I could imagine. And I said, someday, Siri is going to be right there as an icon on that Apple Store wall. That to me seemed impossible, crazy, impossible. And so when, I, when uh, Siri came out on the iPhone 4S, I had to go to an Apple Store, and this is what I saw. I walked up to the front door, and it said, introducing Siri with a plasma display on a loop. And I got chills remembering the juxtaposition. Thank you.